Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do, so press this bell and enable to send notifications. The third planet of the solar system, Mars, or the Red Planet, continues to raise questions and scientific interest. For decades, robots exploring the Red Planet have been beaming back pictures of a strange world full of breathtaking beauty. With mountains three times higher than Everest and canyons five times longer than the Grand Canyon, Mars is an adventure traveler's paradise. And with its dusty atmosphere, polar caps that change with the seasons, and roughly 24-hour days, Mars is Earth-like enough to beckon human visitors. As NASA's next big mission, the InSight lander prepares to touch down in late November, take a look at some of the biggest mysteries about Mars yet to be solved, including some things we may never know until humans set foot on Martian soil. So NASA, are there phyllosilicates or not? Earlier, NASA announced that their Opportunity rover had discovered something entirely new on the Red Planet's surface, a line of light-colored rocks referred to by agency scientists as homestake. At the time, some scientists speculated that homestake could provide hard evidence of the existence of phyllosilicates, a class of minerals that form in the presence of watery and presumably life-friendly environment. It's been a little over three weeks since the discovery of homestake was announced, and as these images show, NASA has done quite a number on the peculiar outcropping in the process of analyzing it. But the agency has yet to announce the results of its investigations. Did they come up empty-handed? Are they still waiting for more conclusive evidence? Or are NASA scientists holding on to some game-changing news? Does liquid water flow on Mars today? The Martian atmosphere today is so cold and thin that liquid water on the surface should either evaporate or freeze into the soil. For over four decades, though, Mars spacecraft have snapped photos of what looks like hundreds of dried up rivers. So where did all the water go? Scientists think these eroded features could be left over from a time when Mars was warmer and wetter, and that some of it may still be locked underground as ice or even deep liquid reservoirs. Orbiters looking down on Mars have shown large amounts of water ice frozen at the planet's poles. In 2015, images from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter showed strong evidence that liquid water may flow intermittently on the modern Martian surface. Based on the orbiter's data, research identified the chemical fingerprint of hydrated minerals on many steep crater slopes where mysterious darkish streaks have been previously spotted. It's possible that briny Mars water flows on these hills during warm seasons and fades away when it gets cold. But without closer examination, it's been hard to say for sure whether these recurring features are indeed being made by water or by simple flows of dry dirt. Meanwhile, Europe's Mars Express Orbiter used ground-penetrating radar to discover signs of a 12-mile-long lake under the planet's south polar ice cap. Scientists believe that the underground lake can stay liquid because of its concentrated, briny nature. Mars may have many such large water reservoirs scattered across its polar regions, the scientists suggest. Finding them and figuring out how to access their bounty could be critical for potential human explorers visiting Mars in the future. Mars is once human's home planet? Meteorites discovered in Antarctica that came from Mars, blasted off the red planet by cosmic impacts, have structures that resemble ones made by microbes on Earth. Although much research since then suggests chemical rather than biological explanations for these structures, the debate continues. These findings do raise the tantalizing possibility that life on Earth actually originated on Mars long ago, carried here on meteorites. I mean, you? Me and your dog may not be Martians by birth, but we were all Martians by ancestry. Why does Mars have two faces? In the 1970s, NASA's Viking missions made the first complete survey of the topography of Mars. Since then, scientists have been puzzled over why the planet has two faces. The northern hemisphere is much flatter and lies lower than the heavily cratered highlands of the southern hemisphere, with a difference in elevation of between 3 and 5 miles. Theories have suggested that internal geological process, like heat convection in the mantle, could have formed Mars's present-day features. It's also possible that the planet's northern half was worn down over time thanks to a vast ocean filling this global basin. 
Other studies, however, have come up with a more violent hypothesis for this bizarre dichotomy. Perhaps a large asteroid the size of Earth's moon smashed into the planet's south pole 3.9 billion years ago. Such a devastating impact would have been a defining moment on Mars, churning up a magma ocean that gave rise to the red planet's volcanism, which in turn might have spewed the material that created the southern highlands. Figuring out this aspect of the red planet's past could help scientists better understand where future explorers may want to land to find the best resources for establishing a sustained human presence. What's up with Phobos and Deimos? Mars has two small potato-shaped moons called Phobos and Deimos. In many respects, including size, shape, color, and apparent composition, the moons look to be wayward asteroids captured by Mars's gravity. But the fact that Phobos and Deimos have circular orbits above Mars's equator challenges this capture concept. Two asteroids flying past would be unlikely to both have such a trajectory and subsequent history after capture to settle them into such an orbital arrangement. How Phobos and Deimos really got there is hard to say, Squire said. Instead, the moons could have formed from material blasted out of Mars by an impact, just like our moon, and retained a lumpy, uneven shape because they lack the mass and corresponding gravity to become spherical. At any rate, the speculation in the 1950s and 1960s that Phobos and Deimos might be artificial in nature has long been debunked, along with the other wild sci-fi rumors about irrigation canals, human faces carved in rocks, and little green men with ray guns. What is generating methane in Mars's atmosphere? In the past few years, both Earth-based telescopes and Mars orbiters have detected traces of methane on Mars, a gas that could be the result of present-day biological activity or that could signify other geological processes at play. Recently, findings from NASA's Curiosity rover suggested that low levels of methane on Mars skyrocket tenfold over the course of months. This indicates that there is ongoing production of methane, which is perhaps being vented and quickly dispersed around the rover's Gale Crater landing site. While the same gas in Earth's atmosphere is mostly the result of biological activity, scientists say that these Martian observations are not necessarily hardcore evidence of microbial life. NASA believes that the source of this methane is north of Curiosity, but it is nearly impossible to define its precise location. The methane source may remain a mystery for the time being, since the rover is not headed in that direction and instead has its sights set on investigating the layered rocks of the crater's central mountain. Vallis Marineris, the Grand Canyon of Mars. At over 3,000 kilometers long, up to 600 kilometers across, and as much as 8 kilometers deep, Vallis Marineris is the largest canyon in the entire solar system. The canyon is clearly visible, slicing across the face of Mars in the image featured here. Just imagine, you could fit over three Grand Canyons end-to-end -end across Vallis Marineris's length. How Vallis Marineris formed has been a point of contention among scientists for decades, though one of today's leading hypotheses holds that the geological gash originated as a crack billions of years ago as the planet cooled and has formed over the ages by rift faults. Whether or not the erosive force of flowing liquid water played a role in the canyon's formation early in Mars's history is a theory that stands to be substantiated by investigations by NASA's Curiosity rover. Is there life on Mars? The main ingredient for life as we know it is liquid water, and signs of its presence on Mars have kept hopes alive of finding past or present signatures of life. But the Martian surface is a harsh place with wild temperature swings and little protection from harmful ultraviolet radiation. Many scientists believe that dried up lake beds like Gale Crater could perhaps harbor fossils or other traces of past organic life near the surface and NASA's upcoming mega mission, known for now as the 2020 Mars rover, will look for these kinds of traces. Meanwhile, extreme life forms on Earth, including signs of microbes living deep in the planet's interior, offer hope that something could be alive on Mars today. However, some experts argue that sending humans to Mars will mess up the hunt for alien life. The Solar System's Largest Dust Storms Mars is effectively a global desert. 
That means there's plenty of dust to kick up when air gets to whipping around the planet's surface. In fact, Mars is home to what are widely regarded as the biggest dust storms in the solar system. The series of images featured here shows a dust storm quickly enveloping the entire planet. Scientists believe all Martian dust storms to be driven by sunshine. How they grow to be so large, however, is something of a mystery. According to Phil Christensen, a geophysicist who studies the red planet's bizarre storms, the answer could lie in planetary-scale atmospheric feedback loops. One theory holds that airborne dust particles absorb sunlight and warm the Martian atmosphere in their vicinity. Warm pockets of air rush toward colder regions and generate winds. Strong winds lift more dust off the ground, which further heats the atmosphere. Could humans live on Mars? The race is on to send humans to Mars. With NASA aiming for a Mars mission perhaps by the mid-2030s, and public and private ventures around the world developing the necessary technology. But if humans are to survive at all on Mars, they will have to live and work independently of Earth and carve out a living from the red planet's natural resources. Habitats will likely need to be built underground to protect people from dangerous cosmic radiation. Growing food on Mars will also be a challenge, as rovers have shown that the surface soil is sterile and full of toxic compounds called perchlorates. Ambitious space engineers are even now drawing up plans for the next generations of nuclear, chemical, and solar-powered technologies that will not only be able to advance science on Mars, but may also provide the foundation for self-sufficient human habitats. Building more efficient fuel cells and batteries will be necessary for surviving weeks of darkness during regional or global dust storms. Mining the dirt and rocks under their boots will be critical for making air to breathe, clean drinking water, rocket fuel, and basic building materials. The only way to solve this mystery is to have that first expedition to Mars set sail. When that happens, there is no question most of us will be glued to our screens, waiting eagerly for humans to establish their next outpost on Mars. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking the like button. Do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up my next video.